Hi, good afternoon and welcome to the ZP Developer Zone. So we like to generally do this um, in a morning, that's UK time, but today we're actually doing it in an afternoon. We've gone early because there's plenty of meetings. Um, but that said, let me go forward and be efficient with your time. So we are meant to put this out on the 11th of April, even though it is the 10th of April today. But that said, um, we like to do this um, once or twice a week and it's really just answering technical questions that have come in during the week. So we question number one and question number two, I'm gonna mix them up today and sort of answer them um, in parallel because this is quite a common um, question um, from ZP, which is people are looking for low cost options on micro needles, and they're also looking for technologies around CGM, continuous glucose monitoring. Um, and the quick answer is actually, I mean, you can, I mean, this is a micro needle technology from ZP. This is basically a sort of a top tier premier kind of technology that we have. Um, I mean, I think I'll, I will mention it in a minute, but this is kind of a technology that uh, goes transdermal, it uses micro needles, um, and it's easy to say that this kind of technology has had about 20 million US, sorry, 20 million euros spent on it, which is, you know, pretty equivalent to 20 million US dollars. And it's a really low cost micro needle technology. We will talk about what we have on our website, but I do want to distinguish between what we have on our website and what we're using um, with some of our really well funded um, clients. And then question number three is about gold screen printed um, uh, electrodes, SPEs. So these gold screen printed electrodes, I will um, mention that as well. Um, so there'll be the three questions that I'm really dealing with today. Just to say the three upcoming webinars. If you're super interested in the commercialization of um, point of care or point of need technologies, there's a webinar um, at the end of April. Don't worry if you come into this web, if you're coming to this webinar late, and we do this at the end of the month anyway, so every month, so you'll find this link will be show you when the next upcoming webinar is. So that's about commercialization of point of care or point of need um, diagnostics. Um, there is a webinar now that we realize that, not realize, but you know, there's 50-50 split. Some people are interested in point of need, point of care. Some people are interested in, in wearable biosensors. We're also gonna do a dedicated webinar for wearables as well. As I say, these links will be updated um, as the months go by so that you can sort of find the, the next upcoming webinar. And then there's a sort of a third group really that's um, academia that's trying to provide the technologies so that people can do point of care, point of need um, and wearables. And so we do do a dedicated webinar to them as well. So whether you consider yourself a kind of startup doing a point of care, whether you consider yourself a point a startup doing um, wearables or you consider you're an academic, um, there's a webinar essentially for you to discuss the various technologies from ZP. So question number one and question number two, I'm going to mix these two things up um, a little bit. At ZP, we do a lot of um, so I, I, um, transdermal or transcutaneous um, biosensors. You know, this is trying to get down to the interstitial fluid so that we can measure. Um, recently, somebody was asking about lactate. Most people are actually acting, asking about um, glucose. Some people are interested in cortisol. So you've got these kind of transdermal um, wires. This is kind of what um, Abbott and Dexcom are doing with the CGM. Um, you have micro needles. This is something that um, ZP is, well, we're active in both. We've got wires and we've got uh, micro needles. We have um, technology on the web store. And I would, you know, and I mean it really respectfully, but that is not the tier one technology that we do have. The tier one technology that we do have is, um, it's covered by 50 patents. It's had a lot of investment and we do use that with clients, but there is also a second tier of technology available on the web store just for people to get to what we would call technology readiness level three, just so they can kind of essentially get going and do a proof of principle. Um, we do do sweat analysis as well. I'm going to, I want to skip over that quite quickly because sweat analysis is more about wellness and I'm not really going to talk about wellness, um, today. Um, we also do implanted sensors, um, now, in plant sensors, we're primarily doing this in non-mammalian systems, but it is something that we um, work upon as well. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because, yes, we do have this kind of watch um, technology, but the technology that you see on the web store is not that technology. Um, we do have, though, on the web store, if somebody wants to make a low-cost entry into tech, then we have the micro needles, we have activation solutions, we have glucose solutions, we have test solutions, we also have electronics up there as well. So this link will be a link that you can find underneath the video and that will help um, you navigate into a low cost way of maybe getting into micro needles. Um, we do say that 
We have microneedle arrays and we do have a lot of activation solutions, but we expect you to activate those microneedles. If you want ZP to do it, then you might as well just become a sort of full blown, let's say client and start getting into um, the other technology stack that we have that we don't put on the web store. Uh, but that said, we do have microneedles. We do have activation solutions. You can activate those microneedles and do a sort of lower cost um, budget or lower budget um, start in microneedles. But just to say those microneedles are not the same as the microneedles that we, we do have, as, which we offer to tier one um, clients who are um, doing programs with us. If you want to do a low cost CGM um, demonstrator, I mean, we have electronics, we have CGM, we have test solutions. Um, and I will, A, there's a link here, and B, there are three links here that'll take you through the sensor, the electronics, and the calibration solution. So that will give you a kind of a low cost or the lowest cost way of doing a CGM, let's say, demonstrator. Um, I mean, I did say it about ZP, you know, we do actually work on the total, total, total package. So this is something that we've been working on uh, for some quite some time. And this one, for example, gets implanted into um, salmon. Um, the salmon is not dead in this case. The salmon is actually, it is implanted. These two um, salmon actually have the whole sensor package um, implanted in them. And it's constantly transmitting um, glucose data out to a sort of, um, out to a hub. And we're sending that data to the cloud. So we're very experienced in CGM. But I do want to make sure that people understand that you can go to our web store, you can have a limited budget and you can get going with CGM technology. But just understand that that is not the same as the sort of tier one clients who are really um, engaged with ZP, you know. And, I, and I'll talk about um, the kind of funding that people are, I think with ZP actually, the funding is a lot less because we're so efficient. But actually, you should see the kind of money that is being raised in the CGM space. And I will touch upon that in a minute. Um, the second case study is then we do have this um, type of technology which is much more of a um, wearable watch or bracelet or arm strap technology. This is using um, micro needles. Um, and, you know, the, the nice thing about this kind of technology is I think this will be the kind of next generation of um, CGM. Um, whereas CGM today, continuous glucose monitoring today, require these applicators that kind of fire using a big spring, these sensors into your arm. This you can these kind of micro needles you can just draw them in using um, something like the watch strap. So I do think this will be the much more of a generation two product that I think people will be much more likely to adopt than necessarily everyone running around with a CGM wire sensor in their arm. I only bring this image up because it's not my image, but it's just to illustrate that you know the kind of the kind of money that some people in this space are actually raising and investing. So BioLink raised. I think about 2021, they've been running for about seven years up to 2021. And then in 2021, they raised about 100 million US dollars. Um, and just about four days ago, um, maybe a week ago now, about last Thursday, last Friday, um, I saw them announce that they'd actually just raised another 50 million US dollars. It's really important to kind of understand that, you know, people see CGM technologies available, you know, for example, on our web store. Um, but you really have to understand that if you go it alone, this is the kind of monies that you would otherwise have to raise. I mean, at Dexcom, I did hear the other day that they maybe even had raised half a billion in order to get to market. So just be FYI, you know, um, we will put technologies on our web store. These technologies will get you to some sort of demonstrator, mostly on the bench. But don't mistake that for you know, um, the kind of monies that, that are invested otherwise in getting um, technology to the to the market here. Now, question number three, I'm going to be efficient, but um, at ZP, complete change of direction. Now, we're not talking about continuous glucose monitoring um, or continuous lactate monitoring, continuous lactate monitoring. We're talking about point of care diagnostics. For example, many people like to use gold screen printed electrodes. So we did get um, the background to this is somebody's got some of our um, gold screen printed electrodes. Um, they sent me an image, um, whenever I'm talking about clients, things that clients have sent, of course, I will not mention um, names or anything like that. Um, and the way that they're testing this is they're putting these, um, electrodes, which is unusual. And I'll comment upon that in a minute, um, into a solution with a reference electrode and a counter electrode. This is an unusual way of doing it. Um, I think it adds more complexity than it gives benefit, but that said, this is what is happening. Now, what we're noticing is, um, that 
in this kind of setup where you're using external reference and external counter, which I think is unusual because there is a reference and a counter on board, but you know, I can understand, but that's the way they're doing it. Um, the only working, the only electrode they're using on the SPE at the moment is that working electrode. Um, but what is interesting is um, that some of the other electrodes like here, this is the reference electrode, it's very dark. Now this reference electrode is very dark. That would almost suggest that some current has been passed through it. Um, so I've got a suspicion they might have a connection issue um, or it's just because they've actually been chemically um, exposing this, but it's very dark and the, and, um, the counter electrode here is not dark at all. So it makes me feel like they're pushing these sensors or these screen printed electrodes into the connector. I'm just gonna drag myself out, out of the way slightly. They're pushing them into the connector, but they might be slightly offsetted, and actually they're touching the reference as well because it's very dark, and I wouldn't really expect um, that um, to be dark like that um, at all. Now, the the other electrode here is, is similarly; it's um, very dark now on the counter electrode, so I sort of feel like actually they're doing slightly what's amateur on this, but even though they're intending only to have the working electrodes be connected, electrically connected to, that makes me feel like, no, I think you're, you're touching the counter electrode as well, which suddenly just came to my mind, makes a bit more sense about their cycle of voltammetry because their cycle of voltammetry may be a bit of a mix between what's happening on the working electrode and then this accidentally contacted counter or reference electrode. Um, this one is you know, strange as well, that it's dark on both the counter and reference I can understand things getting dark on the counter electrode because it's essentially you're doing cycle voltammetry. So on the on the working electrode you're doing oxidations and reductions. Therefore, on the counter electrode you're also doing oxidations and reductions. So I can understand that, but the reference electrode getting darkened is um, over time. I could understand that if you um, expose it to sunlight. I could understand when I say expose it to sunlight, left it sun in sunlight for some some time, but just darkening up like that is is weird let's say unless actually i think you'll generally accidentally make an electrical contact with it when you're doing your experiment and it's actually passing current through it um so um i don't absolutely know what connector they're using and it's no criticism of this connector but these connectors are there's a lot of these connectors out there they come from a well-known supplier the slot on that connector is 10 millimeters um whilst the width of the ZP um, screen printed electrodes. Generally, we make them seven millimeters. So I think that they're slotting into a 10 millimeter slot. And that means that there's a little bit of wiggle room and you could accidentally be slotting in there, but you're accidentally touching other um, of these pins. Because you really, you only need the central pin here to contact with the central pin here or central. So this is the landing pad for the working electrode. And this is the pin that we should be connecting it. And I think maybe it's just slightly offsetted and you're you're actually contacting the other electrodes. No, you know, I just realized by accident, of course, I completely understand that. And that's why I think it might be darkening up here. I will also mention that I do realize by looking at um, material that you sent me that you may be trying to clean this electrodes with um, hydrogen peroxide in uh, potassium hydroxide. That's not the way we clean them. Doesn't mean that people don't in the literature clean gold electrodes that way, but in fact, it's not the way we clean them. And I will um, comment upon that in a minute. So I would say that some of your problems may be just linked to connection. This is the um, connector that I recommend to you. I think the banana plugs on your instrument are probably two millimeters. That's why I'm recommending a very specific connector to you because then your two millimeter banana plugs will connect in and the slot here is seven millimeters. So you don't have this kind of accidental wiggle room where you may be accidentally contacting with counter reference that you shouldn't otherwise be um, contacting. Um, just to comment more generally on this, um, I feel like, I do like the fact that you're scanning quite fast. The reason I like the fact that you're scanning quite fast is because at ZP we like to fail fast. So do experiments fast, that's good. So I like that. But I, I do feel like you're scanning a little bit too high in the oxidation and the reduction potential regions, because essentially all the all the interesting activity in in this in this analysis is actually happening in this green window here. So, um, if I wanted to essentially not stress these electrodes quite so much, I would actually suggest that maybe you didn't go above five hundred millivolts, and it's also just good science. I mean. Clearly, you've added a redox molecule in here. It's electrochemically active. 
um, any time and that uh, that you're spending up here is essentially wasted time. I realize that because you're scanning so fast, it doesn't take that t that much time at all. But um, otherwise, you could be stressing the working electrode with potentials that you're not really going to use these potentials when you actually make a working assay. I think your working assay is going to be working more in this green box region, not this red box region. So I would actually um, come off that 800 millivolt upper external uh, upper extreme and come down to maybe something like 500 millivolts. Um, then you do go into quite a reduction potential. These these waves that you see here are probably the reduction of oxygen. You're not going to use those kind of potentials. So I would again back off a little bit and actually um, maybe. This region's okay, but I don't, you know, so for example, you know, minus 200 millivolts is here. We typically, and I'll show you some data on that, actually use the gold electrodes between minus 200 millivolts and plus 500 millivolts. So there's no big criticism of, of you, but actually you're not going to use the electrode in this region because actually the signals that you're seeing down here are due to the reduction of oxygen and the electrolysis of water. You're just not going to do it. Um, it's not the signal you're after. It's just going to end up you know, adding noise into your signal. And why spend time stressing these electrodes out and going all the way to 800 millivolts, just clip it at 500 millivolts. Um, so I would definitely cut off these two and bring those um, potential extremes in a bit. Um, and, I, and I did notice here that you, you're cleaning with potassium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide. Um, that's not a solution that I could, we, we don't use it ourselves. So let's say, you know, the nice thing about ZP is, even at this moment, we've got a really massive project on where we're doing um, self-assemble monolayers and making a an immuno um, assay type sensor. So we're super active with you know well-funded clients doing this kind of work all the time. So when I talk about you know when, when I talk like this, it's actually from you know like experience in the past and even active experience at the moment. So um, and we definitely do not clean our electrodes um, in this way, and I will talk about that in a bit. Um, as you know, and I know you've seen these slides before, so I would just say it, but we do make sure that we have tested, um, these electrodes before they actually get shipped. Um, and we save all the data. So I can actually, you know, when I look at this data, this is the data. So I kind of know that some of the peaks that you've got are just nothing. Well, they're, they're a result of the way you, I think you're possibly cleaning the experiment. Sorry, possibly the way you're cleaning the electrodes, the way you're doing the experiment, maybe those um not extreme um potentials but potentials that you don't otherwise need to be using um we and when i said like you know we tend to test between minus 200 millivolts versus 500 millivolts -da, you can see that you know in fact that is something we do and so you know and we test that batch of electrodes multiple times before we actually end up shipping it you know out the doors because why because in, this, in parallel with you using those gold electrodes, we're using those gold electrodes with our paying clients. Um, so, you know, it's in our interest to make sure that these electrodes um, are good before they go. So I think these anomalies that you're getting are simply not anomalies that we are getting. I think it's the way you've been trying to clean the electrodes. Um, also, it's, it's the solution you're using, the way you're applying it, the extreme potentials that you're going to. And I'm not super keen on this use of an external reference and counter. But we do do that on occasions as well. So I'm not gonna to be too um, critical on that. So not super keen on that, but you know, we would just be putting 50 microliters on the tip of that and doing our cyclovoltametry that way. I think this, the reason I like this is because when you use a screen printed electrode, you're not gonna use it in a bulk solution like this. You're gonna actually use it in a um, tens of microliter drop, if not less than tens of microliter drop. So. You might as well do your experiments in that way as well. It'd be much quicker to do um, and easier to do as well. But don't if you've got this connector, I don't think you're necessarily gonna so get necessarily get good results out of this. You will have to change to um, this connector um, instead. Lastly, um, they did say here they're leaving it in water for one or two days. So the quick answer is. Um, I can't recommend it. I don't think it's necessary to do it. Um, if you've got a functionalization that takes one or two days left in water, I think the functionalization needs to be looked at rather than um, rather than actually sticking with this idea that you're going to leave it in solution for one or two days. Um, so I can't agree with that. It's it doesn't seem that that useful to do that. Um, and then you're asking whether actually 
when you do that, that's when you get this discoloration. Because I wasn't, I'm not sure if this discoloration is actually coming from the electrochemical experiment or the pre-chemical treatment. But it may it suggest to me that it's coming from the, you may be suggesting here it comes from pre-chemical treatment. It's definitely, um, don't leave it, I would say, in that solution for one or two days. It's not the way you're intending to use these sensors. You're intending to make a point of care device. A point of care device, you know, put a sample on. If it was ZP, we'd be trying to get the result in two minutes. Um, if it's a molecular assay, sometimes it could be um, longer than that, but it's not the way you're intending to use the sensors. So don't, no, don't leave it in solution for one or two days. I don't think it's doing you any favors. Um, just a last comment. This is one of our scientists, and I'll put a link up in a minute, actually cleaning the gold electrode, because we do believe in cleaning the gold electrodes before you start. But she's, um, in fact, I was about to say, she's been very careful about how she adds the solution, but I realize she is actually putting that cleaning solution over i can see it now it's like a 50 microliter drop over most of the electrodes so i would i preferred her to just to have actually um just done it there you know I'm a, I'm a big believer in put the solution where it's meant to be don't put the solution where it's not meant to be i mean that's just the sort of you know that's just good manufacturing sometimes you know that you control what you you control as much as you possibly can so I do agree that it is good to clean gold electrodes. They do tarnish. doesn't matter where you get the gold electrodes from. Um, I prefer, in fact, when I look at our own scientific video here, that we'd actually just done it on the gold electrodes. Um, and I've got a little bit of a video that I'm going to share with you. So there's a link here, and that will take you to a video and maybe follow that, maybe follow that cleaning procedure rather than, I think, the cleaning procedure that you're otherwise following. So... We do have low cost options to microneedle technology. You can buy them on our website. We do have low cost options to CGM, continuous glucose monitoring, but just know that the CGM space is not a low cost space to play and you do have to get decent amounts of funding to really do this. And that I think the BioLink video says it, or BioLink story says it all. Since 2021, we're now in 2024, they've raised 150 million and they will probably have to raise more as well. Question number three, gold screen bit electrodes. Don't ever think that um, comments from me are criticisms, criticisms. All we're doing is like, you know, trying to use our experience to get people from where they're at to something successful in the shortest amount of time. So um, I'm not super keen on that cleaning solution. I'm not super keen on the extremes of the voltage. And I've got a suspicion that some of those sort of crazy peaks in the CV are coming from the chemical treatment and the cycle of voltammetry that you're doing. And obviously I, I, I've always keep the receipt. So, you know, we know what we, sh you know, we know how the product um, behaved. And I've got a suspicion those extra peaks. If you bring in those potentials a little bit and maybe not do such a harsh cleaning material, cleaning step, then hopefully those extra peaks that you've got, um, will essentially go away um, and I am um, just out of interest we are using those electrodes ourselves in parallel with you um, but we're doing it on our paying client project so if you've got any questions of ZP um, don't hesitate to reach out to us okay thanks very much